Dave Mullen, my pal. How are you, buddy? I'm all right, thank you, Eric Antone. I'm good. I'm here. We're going to talk about Ooh. death today. We're going to talk <laughs> about death. Let's cheer ourselves up by yakking about death. <laughs> so before we begin, as always, uh, for those watching on Twitch and YouTube, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any other platform that you enjoy listening to your player FM, whatever it is, do the same. Rate and review the show. Throw us a subscribe. The reason is because it helps us make better stuff for you guys and gals and folks and everybody. Right. Everybody will will be able to make better stuff along the way. And that's what we want to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, It's true. So this this particular. Um, oh, and of course, can't forget omniversecomics.guide. <laughs> The one-stop spot for reading orders, reviews, videos, podcasts, you name it. Is there anything that people can look forward to that uh, has recently been thrown up on the website, Dave? Um, there's some um, Transformer-related stuff on its way, but I don't want to talk about Very that cool. too much. Last week, we added the 2099 uh, reading yes. order for the original uh, continuity, because right. it's kind of confusing, right. 2099, in that... Mm. They kind of messed around with it later on, around the Superior Spider-Man time and onwards. But I think it's mm. so it depends who I talk to. Is everyone's really unsure as to whether it is a divergent thing or it's not, and it's still numbered the same, but it can't be the same. So anyway, I've just gone. You know what? This is the original continuity. I'll do the other one later. Right <laughs> when when it's certain. How many places can you find the reading order for twenty ninety nine Marvel Universe? I've never seen Omniverse one. Comics. Guide. Yeah, just Omniverse Comics. Guide. I think that is the one place. And if there are other places, it ain't as good. No. Nah. <laughs> this is how we do it properly. Because <laughs> Dave is a sick man. <laughs> yeah. He makes reading orders for. I love it though. For That's great. For fun. That's what you love. For fun. Hey. And you know what? The best part about it is, uh, guys like Nick from Geekable actually use them in their collecting. Yeah. So it makes it, right, that's what it's all about yeah. at the end of the day. Someone appreciates it. So shout out to Geekable. Shout out to Nick. Um, yeah. Shout out to everybody that supports the show. This episode in particular, someone threw the idea out at us. Kfire 689 Kfire 689 Yes, 689. well done, dude. Thank you so much. Thank oh. you. Th thank you, Kfire 689 this is his idea. And that just goes to show if you're listening to the show and you got an idea for something that you want us to talk about or um, a list, top 10 list or anything that comes to listeners' minds, let us know and we'll make an episode for you. And we'll give you the credit for the brilliant idea. But today's subject, top 10 deaths. Yeah. Which is... For me, there are some significant comics that I read specifically because it was the death of a character uh i've talked about it many times before and i won't list it today i hope it's not on your list but death of superman is probably the one that is the best-selling death of storyline it's in the title but the other thing people should know spoilers i'm guilty of always saying spoilers <laughs> after the fact. so before we begin we're gonna spoil we're gonna spoil some some stuff obviously would you like to begin oh sir okay um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll take you up on that. Um, Let's do it. I'm going to begin in a place I wasn't expecting to. So this one is from The Walking Dead. It's um, it's a big one. This is a big one. And I think what was shocking about it was it was a big moment in a series of big moments and shocking moments. This is the the death of Laurie. Um, so when she's when she's killed at the very end, I can't say it without spoiling. It, it's impossible. Um, when she's killed at the end of this, for me, it was one of the most shocking moments in that entire run. So I wasn't going to read um, The Walking Dead because I read the first six issues. I think I mentioned that recently. I'm trying to avoid mentioning stuff we've talked about too much recently. It's okay. About recently, but that I know happens. this came up. Um, but that's why I'm opening with it. This was around the, the Governor saga. So this is when they're trying to escape the prison. And as Laurie is, is escaping... Um, she's attacked by the governor's men and i think it's the way that it happens because laurie isn't the only one that who falls um and that's the bit i won't spoil 
because if you're kind of still thinking about it you know if you've seen the tv series you know something happens to her the way it plays out in the comic is very different so and i would say that the comic deals with it in a more shocking way and a much better way the comic is way superior to the tv series and i know the tv series meandered and i know i haven't i finished neither um yeah, it's like uh, Marvel Man is literally just coming to the death was so shocking, but loved it. And that's the thing. This is, it made me go, this is horrendous. This is horrendous. But like, I have to now read the, the second compendium. And it's, you know, these are a commitment, man. These are beasts. And this this was issues one to 48. And we get hit with it at the end of that story arc. And it is, it's a stunner. Um, it's not something you see happen. The way that it's done, it's not something you see happen in comics or fiction in general um it's super dark but it was such a it was such a stunner that honestly that that made me just fall in love with the walking dead as a series it made me realize just how good robert kirkman had become because at the start of this series the dialogue's a little clunky and it was like it's okay and as he works through it it's a little bit like um I don't want to mention Invincible again, but it, um, it's a bit like that in some ways. And the, the dialogue is a bit clunky, but as it goes on, it starts to really improve rapidly because, like, his skills just hone. It's a great book, um, and it's one of many, many jaw-dropping moments in this in this title. Do yourself a favor and pick it up. If you think the series wasn't great, doesn't matter. Just ignore the series. Just get the damn book. It is one of the best comics I've ever read, and I do need to finish it because I've read half of it. I haven't read or watched the show. Have you not? No, neither. No. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, yeah, I mean, I've only heard good things. Like people were talking about the show ad nauseum at one point, and it was irritating because it was like, you know, it's a comic book. That's not a comic book. Yeah, it's a comic book. Yeah. And like, once you read it, no, the show's just too good. Okay. Um, I, zombies weren't my thing. Like I just wasn't into like Same. the horror and stuff like that. Yeah. So it was, I wasn't drawn to it. I'd had no doubt that it was good just because of the word of mouth. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, this thing's existing. Everyone's buying it. People are constantly talking about it, but I never, I never dipped my toe. But, um, yeah, if it's, if it's, if you put it up in, into one of your favorite books that you've read, yeah, I definitely give, I definitely give it a try. Cause that's the thing. It's, it's, Funny because it's around about a time as well that even though manga sells really well, you don't release an American series with no color in it and expect it to to survive. It's a black and white series. Um, yeah, yeah. And yet it's it's won so much acclaim um, and it's deserved. Now I I say that about the first hundred issues ish. I do need to finish. I haven't finished the series. How many How many issues are in that series? Like, what's the commitment for someone like me who hasn't begun it? It's four of those compendiums. Uh, 48, paid, 48 issues a pop. But I think the last issue, um, which just falls short of 200, I think it's like three issues worth in one comic. So it kind of brings it up to the 200. Something, something like that, I think. I, I can't quite remember, but yeah. Okay. Um, Yansem also says, I still have that page burned into my mind or burned in my mind. Like, wow. It's wow. honestly wow. the payoff in this book. There are pages that turn and you're not expecting what comes next. And that, and it, it's like a punch in the face in such an awesome way. And that, and, and I'm glad that's the other thing about compendiums. I read the six issue trade, didn't bother carrying on. Um, my mate Pete Ware um, lent me the the compendium and i i read through the whole lot in a, a couple of days nice very nice that's cool um i'm actually going to not stray far from your pick mm. and i'm gonna yes i'm going to mention it again and it's the invincible there are plenty of moments you can pick and i'm not going to talk about this too much for those that know they know if you haven't given this book a try give it a try but this is this is a cheat, but it's the it's the death of a team. Guardians of the Globe. Mm. This was meant to be, from what I heard, his intention was for this to be issue 24, 25, like the end of a two year. Yeah, I think um, you're right. Right. Mm-hmm. And the book wasn't really picking up steam the way they had anticipated. It was respectable, but it was possibly going to like end just because the numbers weren't strong enough. And once the death of the Guardians of the Globe occur, 
I think it's earlier that it happens in the series, but you find out all the information you need to know by the end of issue 12, putting it all together. Yeah. Once you once it happens and it, all of it comes together, it's like, <laughs> now what? Yeah. Now what? Now what? Now what? I think the way they set the issue up is really nice as well because, yeah, it plays with you. I mean, it's it's hard not to talk about it and spoil it, but it's yeah, better if you haven't read it. For those who know, you get it. You know, it's like, ah, yeah, we know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. But if you haven't read it, I, I want the anticipation to kind of be like, well, well, well what happened? Read it. Mm-hmm. Check it out. See what happens. Nice. Uh, so that's a quick number number one pick. Not my number one pick, but first first choice. Cool. Dave, take it away. I'm going to have a quick number two. So... Um... <laughs> Make when I quick, when I come lie. back, we'll talk about we'll talk about this. This is um this is kind of hard to explain when this is because it's it's going to be really difficult not to s- just spoil the entire story because it is it's kind oh. of a done in one story. I'm finished. Oh, we're finished. <laughs> it's kind of a done in one story. <laughs> um, I'm going to do that Leo Sayer move every time. Do you even know who Leo, Leo Sayer is? Did you have him in Canada? <laughs> I don't know who Leo Sayer. Oh my god, who's such a bizarre. Anyway, I'll explain another time. Um, okay. But basically, yeah, this is um, it's a Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man annual. So it's a one-off story. And it's not like a lot of the time annuals, they ended up becoming this kind of mess of an anthology by the 90s uh, or yeah. late 80s. Uh, but this I'm is never too time... thrilled to get to the annual issue when I'm reading like an omnibus. I'm like, oh. yeah, it's, it's like rare. a commercial break sometimes. It kind of is. Um, but there was a period when they were, they were worth picking up. They were worthy because like Uncanny X-Men annuals were great. They always had a, a really good guest artist, often like Arthur Adams or Alan Davis. Um, it's Amazing Spider-Man annual number 20. And it's set before Iron Man 2020's first appearance in Machine Man 1 to 4, which was the alternate future. It was the future at that point in time. But yeah, so basically Arno Stark is the future Iron Man. His, his connection to Tony was always a bit kind of vague. It seemed to switch a little bit here and there. Um, they introduced an Earth 616 version of Arno Stark later on that was a bit different but this is the original alternate reality Arno Stark anyway this is set before it's kind of an origin for him in some ways because when he when he shows up in Machine Man he's kind of a big bastard and he is being manipulated by Sunset Bane who at that point I mean most people won't even know who she is but I think when she's kind of a a young the idea is she's a young hot businesswoman who's a rival potential rival for Tony Stark back in the modern era in this she's much older trying to seem younger trying to age gracefully and failing dismally um and she's pure evil and she manipulates um arno stark into fighting machine man for her this isn't really about that this is set before so you find out why he kind of went very dark and why his behavior is the way it is in that mini arno stark is is celebrated as this great big hero he's amazing um and he's photographed by everyone. And basically he stops some terrorists, but he is a little on the overzealous side and cocky. And he kills a terrorist whose eye business is the only thing that can be used to defuse this, this device, this bomb that's going to explode. So he has to go back in time to our present to find that guy, that terrorist, when he was a kid and get his retina scan so that he can stop this thing from exploding um and this machine is telling him all the time like that there is a 12 percent degree of error margin of error on the time scales while you're jumping through time um and, and he's just really cocky and then he ends up trying to attack this to get hold of this kid quick as he can so he can jump back spider-man thinks i the real iron man is attacking a child um, like a 12 year old child so he's basically stepping in but it turns out spider-man's being just as arrogant and ignorant as iron man is it was back in the day when good guys used to fight good guys and you'd go seriously if you just went hang on a minute are you here for this and they go yeah you and they go yeah and it would be over but they don't because then you don't get six pages of fight scene for no reason with an inconclusive scrap but um it's what makes it fun right so they you want fight the toys it out. to fight each other, right? The toy, this is what we're here for, isn't it? That's what, yeah. you know, that's what you they get didn't even for. Fight each other, like, like that what? would be so disappointing. Yeah, they'd be, yeah. oh, they'd be uproar. Um, Screw you, Amazing Spider-Man Annual Number Twenty. Nothing happened. So he <laughs> went back to the future, and everything was fine. He returns to the future, and the way they play out what happens, there are a number of deaths that impact Arno Stark, and it's 
for me, like for for the, the the greatest deaths point of that, it's quite what's what really stuck with me was the way it's um the way he sat when he returns. It's like that final page. It's I love that moment. It's horrible, but it kind of that explains why he is the way he is and why he's so broken by the time he appears in Machine Man. I know it's very well, it's not very obscure. It's Marvel. It's Spider Man annual, but um, I just I loved it. And the things it's not like a it's not known characters. Yeah, it won't make any lists that people will look up like top twenty deaths in comics. I don't think that one will ever be mentioned. So it's cool that you bring it up here because probably not. But it's it's we, impactful. The deaths are impactful even if you don't. I mean, know the names of some of them, but it's not the point. And that's the thing, like you're saying, it's the deaths that have the impact. And I love that annual. It doesn't get enough praise. It's like Mark Beecham art as well. So it's like, it's not even the regular creative team. It's a standalone story. And it's, yeah, it's That is the cool stark. thing about, that is the cool thing about no pun intended. Uh, annuals is that it, it could be the one time where this is so-and-so's first time drawing the character that he would later redefine. Like there are those moments where an annual is, I never knew that this guy drew. Yeah a story and and collaborated with this writer and an annual it's those moments are kind of special so yeah as much as i slag on a on an annual from time to time there are some magic moments dude 80s annuals are the best like you go back and you can get some great like like arthur adams and, and alan davis worked on x-men annuals before they ended up getting any mainstream gigs in most titles i mean like long long shot was a six issue um miniseries that featured that character and featured Arthur Adams art. But in terms of the big name characters, he was mostly doing annuals or like that new mutant special edition. So you jump in there, you can find some gems in the annuals in the eighties. Yeah. Possibly yeah, the seventies, sure. but definitely the eighties. Yeah, definitely the eighties. I think, I think, yeah, the seventies, eighties, the annuals meant a little bit more. It was, it was maybe going to end a story arc or be a key moment. Like you wanted to make sure you didn't miss it. Yeah. Whereas I think by the, by the late, 80s they were kind of going let's make this a crossover let's make this an event evolutionary yeah. war no that wasn't the end <laughs> oh no i did the hand moment that'll have to be it now I'll, we'll have to end it there for that one but that's an um, issue that doesn't get enough love and i think people should read it because it's it's played really well cool iron man 2020 did not expect that to be on the list that's great okay Okay. Um, my next pick. Should I show the book or should I just talk? Because I don't. I don't know if I should show any. Oh, pictures. if we show, I, I guess the... if we show the book, we know we know that it's a new thing on the the tubes. Okay. What do you got? Ah, uh, I like I like it when it piques your interest. So this one isn't the death of a hero; it's the death of a hero's spouse, and it. Uh, it was controversial, I think, at the time, and I think in some some ways still now. But it was one of those things where the aftermath and what it did for that character actually made it somewhat interesting. I don't know about you, but I never read anything elongated man related. But in the New 52, yeah, I was very interested in uh, Ralph Dibney and his journey in life and all the things that he gets himself into – because of this story, identity crisis. Mm-hmm. Brad Meltzer, the fame—I don't know if it's in the middle. Yep. Brad Meltzer, the uh, famous novelist, with Rags Morales, who I got to sign this book for me, which was really cool at a con. Um, spoilers, but Ralph Dibney's wife is murdered uh, in a very sadistic way. It's shocking. It's a disturbing story as far as the heroes are concerned and and their relationships with each other the secrets that they keep some of the things that they do or had to do in order to i don't know make things right is very it, it all the heroes find themselves in a place where they're questioning their own in incentives their morality their like where do we draw the line with what we should and shouldn't do and how did one of our our people how were they killed and we can't figure out who would have had any interest in doing that? Like what would be the motivation for something so heinous? The art in this is pretty cool. The image of Ralph Dibney crying. Yeah. His, his entire – like if, for those who don't know the elongated man, he's basically got the same power set as a 
Reed Richards, like they stretch, right? Mm-hmm. They can use their bodies in different formats. That's DC's version. This in this way, he's a detective. In in the DC universe, elongated man is is considered detective, but he can't figure out who would do this to his wife. And the scene of him crying, holding her, it's just like it, it's it's a perfect description of how people feel. Yeah. They lose somebody. Yeah. Like your whole body melts. Right? It's it's that's the thing. Should I it's why he's gonna, such a perfect character for that in a way because you see his like his reaction it it's conveyed so well in in a physical way i nearly picked one of the latest stories connected to this but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go into it now but it's just funny that this sort of nearly made the list for me i don't want to oh man i'm looking through the book and i'm like don't waste too much time (laughs) trying to find this spot but it's such a special like artistically, there it is. There it is, right here. Like, wow. Yeah, I remember that so vividly. And it's and it's the fact that he's not doing that as a expression of his power. He's no. that's happening to his body as an expression of his sorrow. Yeah. And their relationship was just a beautiful relationship, and the whole and and as what follows, identity crisis is infinite crisis. And his story and his quest for closure with the death of his wife and how it all happens, which I won't share, because that's the whole point of Identity Crisis and the and the Fifty Two yes. series. Did I yeah. call it New Fifty Two before? I didn't mean to. I don't. I don't remember. I knew what you meant, so I didn't really think about yeah. it. But I, I nearly touched on the Fifty Two stuff because of the way that's handled there in a, in a similar but in vastly different way. But again, yes. I won't. I won't go into that. Yeah. So. That's that's the keys to to my picks are like the significance, but also like the 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 story that goes along to be before and the after part of these stories, and uh, that's the fun part about reading comics, right? It's like I don't know if you're gonna list something like this. I imagine you won't because it's pretty obvious. But something like uh, the death of Gwen Stacy, we all know, we all know that it's the key moment in Spider Man's early publishing stories and career right it's it's yeah. every it's one of those things that define them uncle ben gwen stacy yeah like, i think the tricky thing with gwen stacy because like when i i mean i don't again don't want to veer down this corridor if we're not you know necessarily talking about it but the tricky thing for probably for yourself and and me and anyone born after us mm-hmm. is that when we read it it was referred to as the death of gwen stacy right at the time it wasn't the closest you got was that on the front cover it said one of these characters will die turning point yeah right? turning point and then so but you didn't know who would and you probably if there's someone who isn't going to be killed off it would be gwen um mm. so it's it's shocking and i remember reading it there was an interview i think with clint mansell who's um he was in my favorite band ever at one point pop will eat itself but he's now he does soundtracks so he's quite well known for doing soundtracks um look him up he's amazing Anyway, he he said that the the death of Gwen Stacy really shook him as a kid because it was just mm-hmm. so unexpected, and it was almost like, I think it was the first experience of death, and it's that shock and loss, you know. And that's when they didn't bring characters back. It was never an intention, even though they kind of played with it with the clone, the original clone saga immediately afterwards. But yeah. Gwen Stacy, the rule was she's dead, but it's kind of a bit messed with now with the ghost spider element. Right, right. Yeah, they they brought versions of the character back around, so now they exist and they're their own thing. And the Ultimate Universe had a Gwen and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, their presence in the in the Marvel Universe is always going to be there. But with something like Sue Dibney, I didn't know who she was no, until I read Identity Crisis. I didn't and either. I and I wouldn't even know where to. Is there anything other than? I'm sure there's a series from the 80s post uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths where there's an elongated man series. I know he's in the Justice League International and things like that, but I didn't know where to I had no interest in the character. No, me either. I think it's Justice League Detroit, but I'm not 100% on that, but I think like she's one right? of those perfect couples and that's why yeah, no one's going to mess with them. And then they did. That I think there are some people that look back on that series now with some disdain who used to think highly of it. I, I think I still liked it. I mean, I, I remember liking it because it's quite dark and it was quite shockingly dark. I never really saw DC that way. So um, we 
we do have a comment from Omega Bread where he says his melted visage is, is heartbreaking. Um, and yeah. he hadn't read any elongated man beforehand and followed him all the way into 52. Um, and his nose twitching. <laughs> That's the way he phrased this, he bastard. I thought when his nose was twitching in that series indicated that it developed a coke habit after Sue's death. Um, yeah, but that is the thing. He would he would sense crime with his nose twitching. And it was all, they were quite sweet characters, but not necessarily the most memorable. Um, and that's why I think people were quite still quite protective of them, though, because they're of that time. And then that brought them into a very dark period. But it's just, I don't know, some people love it. Some people are a bit weird about it. I like it because I like dark shit. And I wasn't that attached to them. I didn't know who they were until that moment. Like, no, me say neither. So. And, and what follows in the, <clears throat> the 52 series, like I said, it's one, that's a great series. Oh, it's a, so good. An incredible task, an incredible feat yeah. that they um, successfully managed to pull off yeah. with four big writers, um, guest artists that are, are using keith giffen's layouts all these different stories being told that are very big big stories right mm. with all the characters that are featured in it and then you've got elon gated man or ralph dibney i should say on this quest that is very much out of it's as far as i know out of his element right yeah trying to i'll just put it this way find closure when it comes to the death of his wife yeah. and it's very relatable that's for sure. I think I think a lot of people could relate to something like that and the feelings and the expressions of the artwork throughout that book. And I like the fact that heroes, I mean, you know, we look at these heroes for a long time as being bulletproof and, and without flaws. And the truth is, from a different perspective, you can easily turn these heroes on their head and they'll look like the villains. Like they're not, not all the things they do, even with the in intentions being good. A lot of times you're like, you know, this only is happening because you exist, <laughs> because you feel you have to do what you're doing. Like maybe if you just stopped and, and then they don't know where to end their, like, well, we have the means to do it, so we should do it. And, and yeah. we have to do like, that's, I think, why people get, I, I don't know how people feel story wise, but I think a lot of the choices made, it's like the way people look at, sorry, this might be another death, but like the Green Lantern fridging situation right famously where it's like why didn't so bad such bad taste da, 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 da. so they might look at this in such bad taste but it brings out the best and worst in the characters and that's what we're here for yeah yeah, yeah. so i think that well, one successfully pulls it off yeah no i totally agree although funnily enough if yeah, you're if yeah. you're happy to for me to jump Continue. on the numbers jump jump on <laughs> Speaking of the Green Lantern, mm. uh, this little beaut. Um, Talk to me. Green Lantern by Jeff Johns, Omnibus, Volume 1. Got mine right here. It's a little on the heavy side. Um, great one. Now, it's been a while great, since I've read this, book. so bear with me. Okay, so the again, this isn't necessarily about specific characters. It's the way it's handled. Um, mm. What's going on with my mop? Um Oh God, look, I look like a two-year-old. I like your cow look. It's good. It's great. <laughs> I'm just shave it all off. Um, yeah. So it's not. It's not. I can't necessarily even tell you who doesn't survive this thing. But it's it's the Sinestro Core War. Um, mm. What is so good about it? One of the many reasons. I mean, the thing is, this thing has got some beats in it. Um, and this is all about the manipulation of the Guardians of Oa. Um, so all these things happen to make them make decisions and change the rules of what Green Lanterns yeah, are and aren't yeah. allowed to do. Um, that was my one of my favorite features of that series yeah. is the way that they got away from like, what a stupid thing to hold a character back. How yeah. do we get out of that? This was brilliant. Go ahead. It was. And that's that's because you're absolutely right. I mean, like the, the one thing they didn't change that I wish they did change was the rhyme. So you got to hold up. I've got to <laughs> stick out my ring and say a rhyme. <laughs> what it's just it's weird they could have just lost the rhyme and i mean some people might have been upset about it i going in like in what 10 years less than 10 years ago as an as an alleged adult i found it weird that they have to say a rhyme you know what's cool about it though it is one of the you know how we were talking i don't know if it was last week 
or the week before where we were talking about the if you know you know comic book fan sort of thing. We yeah. were talking about the, the guy with the tat at the Deadpool. So I was at an airport once and I was uh, wearing a Green Lantern t shirt, right? I'm yeah. A comic guy. I love Green Lantern. And one of the security guards looked at me and goes, Nice t shirt. I'm like, Thanks. He goes, Do you know the you know the Green Lantern oath? And I'm like <laughs> No. Yeah. He actually and he and I was like I do. I go. It's it's not coming to me right now because I'm trying to look for my passport or what. And he just <laughs> he just did it. What? In dark, in blackest day and darkest night and or brightest day and darkest. Like he knew the whole thing. No evil. I'm like, okay, all right, all right, all right. High Did five. he know but the other like, twelve verses as well that no one knows? I don't, I don't no, know not the, the not that he just knew the. <laughs> <laughs> Might be making it up. But that twelve inch remix. That's what he, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he starts yeah. laying down beats. So, so so there is a cool part of it that's like. When people, it's like, okay, you must have read way too much Green Lantern at some point in time, because he was a, he was a little bit older. Yeah. So I was like, my, and he would, it must have been mid forties to fifties. I'm like, okay, this guy knows his comic book stuff to know the oath, and to feel compelled yeah. to share it at the at the airport. How long ago was, was this? I was in my twenties. Oh jeez, I wonder. How that was right. I think I think Johns was still on the the book. Oh, it could be because that was the thing. Everyone was jumping on, and I saw yeah. loads about this in Wizard. And that's the thing, like one of the key things, and they've collected in absolute format. I think they've only collected this the Sinestro Core War. But the And the, Rebirth. Rebirth as oh, well. They've done Rebirth as well. So that's the thing, like with absolutes, they're great, but if they're not gonna do everything, and I can't imagine they would because it's three omnis worth, but anyway. They have um, a lot of holes in the story, that's a lot, for sure. Yeah, I don't really see the point. Then you just end up with two chunks. Um but for me it was this. It's basically when Sinestro forms his Sinestro core. And they attack the Green Lanterns. And literally, this is the spoilery bit, they are wiping them out. They are wiping them out. So when a lantern dies, they the ring comes off and it says that um, this lantern, basically lantern, blah, 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 it's of, of whatever zone it is they work in, deceased. And then, and they're all just, all these rings are flying off. And yeah. they're saying like, oh, deceased, blah, 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 deceased, a lantern of whatever, it's deceased, it was deceased. It crazy. It's like, oh my God. And that was more symbolic than seeing bodies because I guess with the bodies, you could, you think like maybe their arms off, maybe they're okay. And they're not because it's like, it's just saying this over and over again. And you're it's just fine. Like, Holy it's, there's crap. such a finality to the ring saying, yeah, Green Lantern of sector, sector 3314 is deceased. Yeah. Looking for a replacement. You're like, gee. And it's just, it's like a, there's a double page spread of basically that, isn't it? It's just, and it's like the carnage and the, those words being said over and over again. It was so good. I mean, the thing is, I don't want to go into some of the other beats of the story. Um, I can't remember them as clearly, but that was the moment, I think, when I realized that I am hooked. I am in all the Me way too. on this one Me because too. like, it's not, it's not just like character deaths that I don't necessarily think death should be played as just a shocking thing. But it's the way it was done it was so good. Damn comments. What do yeah. we got? Share them. Share I them. can't. They're too filthy. Um, uh, okay. I'll share them anyways. <laughs> no, I'm not worried. Really. <laughs> we'll look. We'll, I'll show you after. No, that's that's. Okay. That's anyway, pretty filthy too. It's <laughs> wrong as well. <laughs> but yeah, it's. It's just the it's the cleverness of it. It's the way it's done. It makes you realize just how horrendous this. I keep saying horrendous. This moment is, um, and what impact it's having because these are not you know yeah they're going to be replaced as a role. It doesn't matter. But these are people being killed. This is literally you might not necessarily know all of them, but it feels like these people who are just trying to do good are just being slaughtered, and it's and the Sinestro Corps feel like a credible threat. And they're pretty scary dudes anyway, you know? They run on fear. And I'm scared for the for the Green Lantern Corps. So, like, it's this, it's such a good story, man. But if you do think about reading it, don't just go straight into Sinestro Core mm. War. I mean, this is right at the end of Omnibus Volume 1. I don't know how easy this is to get anymore. I don't think you, it's that easy, but... It'll come you, back. If, yeah, It'll if you back. can't track it down, I'd be shocked if they don't reprint it. They're starting to, to reprint books again yeah um, it'll definitely come back because I, I just feel like that's one of those um ever, like it's an evergreen it'll always sell for people and it'll it'll always be listed it's one of those series now where whether it's 
Blackest Night or Sinestro Core, there's always something there that people will want to read. And the best way to do it is, like you said, don't skip to the event. No, it doesn't do it. Just it, the build is everything. The build is everything. Absolutely. And the deaths of all of those Green Lantern members, it gets you invested in like, okay, something needs to happen because this is just chaos. Like, what do you do to put a pin in this? Like, you got to, what are the Green Lantern, how are they going to respond to something like this? You yeah, know? and and it gets it gets well, heavy. It's the way good. they do it does change a lot. It changes a lot. It changes everything about the Green Lantern. That's for that's for sure. To, yeah. It went from like he's a cool character, but all you got to do is wear yellow. Like so stupid. Yeah, wear a yellow jumper, you'd be fine. Those decontamination suits, <laughs> they're, right? They're fun. A hazmat suit. <laughs> yeah, it. you're done. Hazmat but suit. It, it, <laughs> what was cool about it was it <laughs> it even explained. Why yellow? Like yeah. the Sinestro core yeah. gave a, a, a proper explanation and definition as to why the weakness. Like, so, yeah, yeah just just read it. it it's, it's, it's a lot of it's fun. A, it's amazing. You won't regret yeah. it, honestly. You won't regret it. it. As silly as, it, as the Green Lantern concept might sound, and I thought it was ridiculous, and I thought, like, nope, nope, give it a go, and I've never regretted it, and I was singing its praises forever after that. Yeah. Getting the Tomasi coming uh, soon. Come on. <laughs> oh, there's one thing I wanted to shout about before in, in our pseudo commercial break. Shout away. One was thank you to everyone who let us take pictures of them at the weekend. That sounds dubious. Um, <laughs> so we were at MCM uh, London Comic Con um, Saturday and Sunday. We managed to catch up with some great people. Got really, really lucky. Chatted to Christian Ward. Chatted to um, Chula Lote, Zoe Thorogood. Um, we chatted to Megan Fitzmartin. Oh, God, there's just so many people and loads and loads of indie creators as well. And we're going to feature some of these people in upcoming episodes. Mike Perkins, well, Captain America wow. fame. Uh, just, it was so good. But it was so huge. This event was huge. And we did manage to capture some people in their cosplay um, outfits. Mm. We are going to share them. Um, How many people were at this show? Dude, I don't know. This event, I thought was going to fill half of this. I mean, not even half of this thing. It's a massive venue. It's the XL London. Have a look it up. It's a huge venue. I thought, oh, so they're probably open about... Is it the biggest about... one? The I... biggest one in, in that side of... I don't know. I'm not a statistician. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's rather large that's all that's about as much as i can give you that's what um, she said <laughs> no she's never she's never said that. um but yeah it's 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 a huge venue it's like an airport hangar basically like times eight um but i thought they'd have a quarter of it and it was the whole thing and it was full of people and there were tons of amazing cosplays um and just loads of, of people just having a goddamn amazing time and i've never seen anything of that magnitude for a comic con the last time i saw an mcm comic con was about 10 12 years ago and it was probably about an eighth the size or less it was small compared to this and that was a big one so i'd love to come to that show That'd it was great. it was massive and i think it's only going to get bigger so great. it was great great fun we are going to run some stuff hang in there it just takes time to put them together um, and this weekend, we're going to be at Portsmouth Comic Con, uh -huh. uh, Portsmouth Guildhall in Portsmouth, of all places, in, in Hampshire. Go um, figure. What are the odds? What are the odds? Uh, that's my Canadian accent, <laughs> um, as well, you know. But yeah. Not too bad, eh? <laughs> what? That's not very convincing at all. You need to work on that. But uh, yeah, so we're going to go down there. We'll do a similar thing. We'll we'll still try and catch people and chat and you know give out cards and bits. But um, yeah, we're going to try and capture some of the activity down there. There's some there's some really cool people who are going to be there, including Isad. Is it Ribic? I think so because it's the Croatian. Is Croatian? Yeah, I'm not sure. Everything is the itch Ribic. Right. Yeah. Uh, Paul Cornell as well. who did Captain Britain uh, and Mi13. He did Doctor. He does Doctor Who comics. Um, off the top of my head i now can't remember i had a few of them where i'm going like holy what um so i think portsmouth is, is building up as well and getting a lot bigger so go down there there's some great creators um there's also just some great people making amazing comics that aren't spider-man and batman and whoever and they're gonna floor you they've got some awesome stuff so go support them awesome. do yourself a favor mate 
Very nice. Yeah. Cool. I'm so happy that you're out there and going to the cons now. And you got to talk to Alan Davis. We're oh, my God. I got to talk to him. We'll talk about it. Yeah. 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 We're going to get oh. into that because because I know that he's one of your favorites. Yes. That was, was great. A, oh, that was just such a moment, man. But yeah, we just had a we had a chat and it was great. And I didn't want to push him to go like, go on, no, Alan, like go go around someone's house and do it. Um, so I just got the little moment I think I wanted a few years back when I kind of embarrassed myself in front of him. So yeah, um, dropping the rock star hype and just having a chat with a guy who did comics and influenced me massively. It was great. Speaking of Mike Perkins working on Captain America. Yeah gonna go into my next pick oh you're number three spoilers Sorry. this is an obvious spoiler death of captain america uh-huh uh pivotal pivotal moment i think in marvel publishing it's, civil war is almost 20 years old that's that's crazy so i don't it, know what it, counts as modern age anymore it's just the best age yeah <laughs> and and this story being one of the reasons for it ed brubaker spending all that time on captain america yeah and really, I mean, I'm reading Sleeper right now for the first time. Ed Brubaker, Sean oh. Phillips. I know it's, I am ready. I think it's pre-Captain America stuff or yes, intertwines. It's maybe it's at pre. some point, maybe, but it's pre. And once he gets onto Cap, it's, uh, you know, he really changes the character, changes the game. If you like the MCU, I feel the best stuff are the Captain America films and large part due to what he puts in place. Very they, much so. They mined from the right stuff. And yeah, they did. It's undeniably the right stuff. It's it's easily the best Cap had been in, I don't know, so long. Long time. Yeah. Very long. Yeah, he for prior to this, he was kind of floundering, the character. He had a long run in the 80s, 90s. Like, you know, he's got tons of stories to read. But once you got into the early 2000s, it was kind of like the character didn't have the same sort of home as it did when you when mark grunewald was writing it and when mark wade was writing it like there was art uh, writers that had been on the book for a, a certain amount of time and got to tell a captain america story after that it was it wasn't until brubaker where it was really boom and this was happening yeah, the same time as uh as, as green lantern like those two books yeah. on both sides were like almost competing with each other for attention because they were so good and the death of Captain America takes place at the end of Civil War, fittingly. Uh, what leads up to that death, why it happens, who commits it, that's what you got to find out when you read the story. But the aftermath, is it possible that a very strong classic run of 25 issues, mm -hmm. the return, spoilers, the return of a classic character, yeah, um, the first introduction of the Winter Soldier, Right? If you've seen the MCU, you know what we're talking about. But at the end of that, Cap dies, and the book gets better Yeah. without him there. And that's no slight to Steve Rogers. It's just the writing was so good. And, the you know, Bucky Barnes stepping into this role, that in itself is a whole experience that there's no way to – it's. No way to spoil it. You got to read it. No, you can't spoil it. You know, you know that stuff's coming. Um, and even if you don't, it still doesn't spoil anything. It's it's such a it's such a good run. But it's like it when people go like, no, it's a really smart political series. You go like, yeah, but it's superheroes, really. Like it really yeah. is a smart, very political series. But that's the thing. After you're right. After after Steve is killed off, there is no Captain America for a fair chunk of time, like almost a year, I think. It's, it's bordering like, on I, that, so it's yeah. not even it's Captain America as a title, but there's no no Captain America in the book, and it's a little while before before Bucky does put on a uniform. Yeah, so, and, and you, you don't notice. Well, you, you know you do, but you, you you're in it. Yeah, to the point where when ultimately what happens in comics happens in this story, you're kind of like, well, we don't want this this part to end. Like when you read Superior Spider-Man, right? Like I kind of like, yeah. Kinda, I'm I'm growing to like this character, even though it, he's not a necessarily a good person. This is an interesting story. Yeah. Let's keep going, and that's how good this this series is. But it won't happen without the main character being taken off the stage for a certain amount of time 
in order to flush out this political drama that's full of action. I mean, it's like a, yeah. it's like Winter Soldier. It's like why, what you see in the movies is very much the tone you get in these books. Better. And Captain America: Winter Soldier. I've gone on record to say it's like I think it's my favorite superhero movie, other than Superman, the original, which is near and dear to my heart. I think it's the most well executed superhero movie that drew from good source material but the books are even better Uh uh-huh they are they really are yeah yeah well you can largely read them alone even though civil war is clearly a big part of the actual death of captain america right right but again reading order to follow (laughs) exactly yeah um if you think that the fallout Mm. is similar to what you get in the falcon and winter soldier it's not it's much better. Like yeah, it's oh not God, even something so to base. Much better. It's nothing to even don't even use that as reference to base it on. <laughs> no. I was hoping. I was hoping that the Falcon Winter Soldier television series was it called? Yeah, Falcon uh, Winter. Soldier. I was hoping it would be as half as good. Maybe it was half as good. Well, but it wasn't. I really like Bucky as Cap. Yeah, and I do no, wish he'd stuck around longer. Yeah, because there's so much um, unresolved things with this character, again, whose shadow is that Gwen Stacy shadow. It's one of those kids. You don't bring him back. No. And Ed Brubaker had said, and I, I heard him in podcast saying, you know, that was the rule. You just couldn't do it unless you did it really, really creatively. Like you really had to make it work for you to get the okay. So for him to get the okay to do it, he really had to jump through hoops and, and come up with a good idea. Because yeah. for all, you know, it was it was one of those storytelling points where you can always go back to uh, Cap sitting somewhere and thinking about Bucky. And, you know, one of those looking back on when yeah. me and Bucky were together. They did that, that was, so many times years earlier did as well. It so much. And they kept right? doing a thing where they'd go like, oh, Bucky's back. And they go like, it's a robot. How convincing are the robots in the Marvel Universe? Extremely. Yeah. What are they called? Are the LMDs? Oh, they got their life model decoys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're extremely... Uh, they fool everybody. You yeah. can never tell. No glitches, nothing. <laughs> yeah. No IT <laughs> issues. Yeah, That so, doesn't sound like the government. <laughs> Captain America... Death of Captain America. It's a... Uh, it's a bit of a cheat because it's all the story surrounding it, but that moment is pivotal in Not Marvel history. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, th- I think that is the, you know, without veering off too heavily again, but it's like, that's the thing. I think it's the, a lot of the time with a character death, it doesn't necessarily need to be a major, major character. It's the impact of that death. And often it's not a major character who gets hit. Yeah. No, that, that was a good one. That was a good one. All right, Dave. Okay. Take it away. Right. So my, my fourth tonight, um, I'm a little conscious. I've just pulled it out. Whoop matron and i've just realized i don't think it's one you've read yet and i'm i don't want to ruin it for you what do i do (laughs) that's okay go for it okay (laughs) spoilers block your ears leave the room and i'll do that and you can come back (laughs) (laughs) no no and then he dies there oh dude you're back right um right so this is if you haven't read league of extraordinary gentlemen it's in I don't know which specific issue it's in because I've only read it in like collected edition format and I don't remember. It's it's basically the second series, so League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 2. Um, have you read that yet? Did you only read Volume 1? Have you read none of it? I've read a little bit of Volume 1 and I just wasn't into it at the time. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to give it another go. Okay. Up to you how you want to play this then, dude. If you do, if you do want to headphones off, it's your call. What I'd love about this is this is my favorite funny death, basically. And it's <laughs> it's it's messed up. And again, like this is Alan Moore, um, Kevin O'Neill, and Kevin O'Neill's known for his messed up stuff anyway. Like his art is freaky. Um but yeah. It's so the team of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, if you know anything about them, it's made up basically of Dr. Jekyll stroke Mr. Hyde, Mina Harker from the Dracula um novels. Um, Captain Nemo, The Invisible Man. It's all that kind of late 1800s, early 1900s novel characters. Um, what's his name? That guy with the gun. <laughs> I think... Uh, yeah. That's Is it Quartermain? Alan Quartermain, thank you. I can't remember what he's from. 
what book he's from. I can because he was kind of new to me from that because I'd never seen him in anything or heard of him before. Is it? Isn't he just the character of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? No, he's from a novel. Oh, okay. I just don't know which one. I mean, you, look it okay. up. Look it up while I'm doing this, and I'll pretend it was. Okay, okay. I'll pretend I knew, and we'll okay. edit. We'll edit that bit out. But yeah. <laughs> Um, so one of the members of the team betrayed King Solomon's minds. I think you're right. I make a bread. Thank you. I think it's King Solomon's minds. I think I know. I remember now it was King Solomon's minds. Edit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if anyone That's knows, though, with, oh, with, with someone those on mentioned live it as us. well. They can, <laughs> they can fact check us, right? Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? No, nothing. I'm just dicking about. Okay. Um, Yeah. Basically, Volume 2 is centered around the War of the Worlds. It's basically inspired by the War of the Worlds, so it's a Martian invasion. But one of the members of the team betrays the others. Um, if you haven't read this, I would actually recommend reading it. So you might want to block your ears if you haven't. But I'm going to have to go into full spoiler zone here. Because basically, Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde finds out that the <laughs> betrayed the team. And you don't necessarily realize he's killed him until <laughs> dies and his blood starts appearing all over the table. I'm not going to spoil it anymore. <laughs> the spoiler is done? The spoiler is done. I'm not going to go into it in massive detail. The thing is, it's such a good it's such a good death, but it's, it's a very darkly funny moment. It's mm. really dark. Um, and some of it's implied and involves buggery. So, yeah. The reason why I plugged my ears was, was the fact, not just that I hadn't read it, was that I realized that there was like a whole storyline lead like the the betrayal part i'm like okay i'm okay with knowing that someone's gonna die because uh -huh. you don't know how but i don't know i don't want to know who is the uh the judas of okay. the story if you will right that okay. was the part where i'm like that's where i want to be surprised i like so knowing that's nothing that's the thing that's why i struggle with these kind of episodes and stuff is because like i like knowing nothing i don't even read the blurb on the back of a book and this book incidentally um it was the league of extraordinary gentlemen jubilee edition um sorry yep. omnibus jubilee edition um it includes uh the first two miniseries first two six issue miniseries and then i think it's got the black dossier in the end if i remember yes um which i think this came up recently as well but not that specific bit but yeah if you can find that it's a really nice collection and it's oversized so but right. series two is better i think than better than series one hmm, interesting so the first six issues are like yeah that's all right Seri series two the next six issues like yeah this was fun okay all right i'll put it on the list for this year try to get it get to it this year um my number four the death of the flash barry barry allen yeah barry allen it's, it's one of those things where the death of this character enhances his mythology yeah. even more and it's Slogans. and it's a, a death where the character it, he's not murdered he sacrifices himself for everybody, and that becomes what he's known for. And the person who picks up the mantle of the Flash, which we all know is Wally West, I think becomes – is the reason why the Flash is in vogue, like, later on in comic books. Like, yeah. it's the, the way they handle Wally West. I think people don't realize, even when they watch the Flash TV show, they like it, a lot of the – flash personality characteristics what we like about them they're all wally west isms i think could be wrong correct me if people disagree you know tell me that you disagree but i wish they would have left it let it be uh i know how much jeff johns loves barry allen and hal jordan and he needed to bring him back since everything he did with Hal jordan seemed to be clicking it's fine that they brought him back i enjoy barry allen as a character but i miss wally west and I feel like this death meant so much to a character's history and what transpires afterwards with his for lack of his nephew and his apprentice, right? Like yeah. he surpasses in many ways, surpasses a guy who's sacrificed himself for the entire universe. Yeah, well that's the thing. He has to he really has to prove himself because he's not just proving himself on the, you know, to his peers in that continuity, in that universe. He's got to prove himself to readers that he can be He's worthy of you picking up his stories. I can't remember. I think Barry's a much more serious guy, isn't he? He's like the um, forensics guy. He's a lot more serious. And Wally's a lot more upbeat. He's almost like the Peter Parker of the DC Universe. There we go. Very much so. He and this is... He uh, himself to death, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, 
drawn by George Perez. Oh. So you got every moment of what happened to him happening, and then you know it's there's a finality to it because of you know, that little panel at the bottom, just that ring. You could do anything you want with these characters, tell any story you like, bring them back to life, all that. And 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 the reason why I say if they would have just left it, it just sometimes the death needs to mean something by leaving it alone right i think it always should but i think in the last 15 years more so it's it's just a revolving door and people go like oh the revolving door of death in comics it's not it's mainstream comics largely and it is only the last 15 years that it's been to this degree yeah yeah i think when you you still have that that experience of the gravitas of death in a uh, creator own book and that even when in those moments they find the back door to bring somebody back to life. You're you're still surprised. You're like, oh, they, it's normally they... part of the plan. It's not that someone was a fan. It's yeah, part of the plan. Right. <laughs> exactly. Busting lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll go with Barry Allen Flash. Nice, marvelous. Is this my last one? This is your last one. Okay. So I'm going to keep it short because it is it is a pretty big spoiler. If you're planning on reading. IDW's G.I. Joe, this was a real surprise. They basically spent over a year building this character up. Um, so if you read the G.I. Joe Cobra series, I think initially it was a four-issue miniseries, and then it was a 13-issue series. I think there were some specials in there as well. And you follow um, a member of the Joes as he infiltrates Cobra, and you're going, oh, geez, where's this going to go? Where's this going to go? And you're following him through and he makes it through. And it's all like the stuff he has to go through in order to weave himself in to this organization. Because like the way Cobra is in IDW, it's a lot more sinister and controlled than like the silliness of the, the G.I. Joe 80s cartoons. Much as I love it, it's not quite as silly. Um, it's much dark and it feels like a genuine threat and a lot of people don't even believe cobra's real whereas the joes are the only ones that know and they're not given any funding so they're barely given anything to combat this thing that no one thinks is is even real and this is kind of the tipping point where it starts to come out it was who people might remember from the gi joe uh movie he was in the todd mcfarlane drawn issue of gi joe the 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 comic um, he infiltrates Cobra and it's his whole journey through in order to get to Cobra Commander so he can assassinate him and it all goes tits up. Um, it's brilliant. It's by Mike Costa. Um, I don't... Off the top of my head, I can't think what else Mike Costa's done. I think he's done some Transformers stuff as well. But it's such a good spy series. It's such. It's basically a great spy series. Regardless of G.I. Joe... There is a way that it was collected, which is all just that run. It's G.I. <laughs> Joe Cobra, The Last Laugh, which just collects that entire series. And even though I've kind of spoiled it at the end, um, it's brilliant. If you don't like G.I. Joe, don't worry about it. This is a proper spy series. This is so good. So there we are. Thanks very much. Good night, everybody. Sweet dreams. <laughs> That's my number five. Awesome. It's in, um, it's in book know- five of this as well. Ooh, there it is. There it is. Nice. All right. Uh, I'm going to bring it back to um, Geekable. Another sh- Geekable shout out. Shout out to Nick. He mentioned this to you on, on the episode that you guys did together. And that's the death of Captain Marvel. It's just yeah. a must read. Yeah. The reason being, if you read Captain Marvel stuff mm-hmm. that Jim Starlin worked on, when you get to the point in time where Captain Marvel is meeting his demise it's not in battle yeah. he gets uh it's what he calls the black death which is essentially cancer yeah and it's very sobering because it's one of those things that i think even just in real life uh they say you know if, if you live 120 years and your health is good eventually the black death will get you and and that's the thing with this story it's that it's it's so you feel it in your chest mm-hmm. because you know that he can't get out of he can't get out of this. And I think that's the point for the catharsis of the story that Jim Starlin was going for at the time because he had lost his father to cancer. And, and he was, I guess, writing something to find closure, find some 
you know, catharsis, like I said. Yeah. But the fact that uh, he's surrounded by his friends and even in his subconscious as he's he's about to meet death, he has that battle with Thanos. It's very symbolic, very uh, somewhat poetic in their 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 fight has always been something that as as cosmic as it is now that he's about to go to the other side, if you will, mm-hmm. he still faces his enemy at the end and, and has to fight it. So there's a lot there to to unpack. And it was done at a time where it wasn't common in comics to do something so heavy. And it was a, a, a proper graphic novel, if you will. They would call yeah. it like maybe a, a, a what would they call it at the time? Like a not a one shot, but it was like no, a, that's what they yeah. So graphic novel. It basically this is to some degree what coined the phrase graphic novel. Is, I think the Will Eisner stuff actually coined the phrase, but the graphic novel is the true in the true sense is a standalone original bookshelf format comic that's not yeah. a reprint. That's yeah. what that's what a graphic novel is. So it was Marvel started a series of graphic novels, and this was the first. This was Marvel graphic novel number one, that's the death right. of Captain that's Marvel. Right. So. It was the first of its kind. It's it because it didn't have to follow the comics code. They could get away with a little bit more. Not that it's got like heavy nudity or no. language or anything in it, but it is a. It's not unsuitable topic. for. Yeah, it's not unsuitable for kids, but it is a. I rem I remember hearing a lot of podcasters say that how much this book meant to them because they were young when they read it and they just couldn't believe that like this happens even to the superheroes you know so it's uh yeah this was one one of those things again the the legacy of the character them being gone the way that they died very natural in a way i mean it it, it's explained well why he gets cancer yeah like it's actually done and it's like ah, that makes sense like damn but this story it's a timeless story just for the sake of Seeing seeing uh, everybody's friend basically, they're having to part ways with them. Yeah, it's very sobering. It's very grounded for something like very. this, isn't it? So yeah, it's it's. I mean, you don't have to read Captain Marvel thirty three first to understand it, but it helps to read that. It's not what you expect. How you expect a a character to go out. So yeah, you know what's happening. That's my number five. That's my number five. Probably. I have more. But uh, yeah, like you said, we could do a whole other one. I think we could do a whole other dude. I could. I've got enough here for another fifteen episodes of just well, death, we'll death, death, the, death, that, death. The, the, the Omniverse <laughs> Comics Guide is of death. That's what we'll the be Omniverse <laughs> Comics Guide to death. <laughs> I wonder how, like, if people be like, oh, that, that's your top one. They didn't no, we know that. Yeah, it's not a chart. It's just impactful no, yeah. stuff, and we can do more. So we may yeah. well touch upon some of the other stuff, but you already know it. So what's the point? That's the thing. We want to oh, – that's the Super G. That's original. Like yeah. that for me was the most impactful one if I'm to be honest. But I've already mentioned it so many times. Like every week I seem to bring it up. Which which one? So, death of Superman. Oh. When we, did, when we did life-changing comics, when we talked about Mike Carlin yeah. last week. Like it's it's got an a omnipresence within the comic book world, the right? omnipresence comics guide. <laughs> I knew it. See, I just love them. <laughs> there it is. Awesome for you. <laughs> Thanks, dude. This is how we roll, yeah. right? That's what we do. If people want another one, let us know. Drop it in the chat. Drop it in the comments on YouTube. Drop it in the wherever you want to drop it. But just let us know. Um, and share yours as well. If there's stuff you think Absolutely. we've missed, then say so. Tell us who, who you'd like. Maybe we can talk about that next time. Yeah, and we, we always enjoy when uh, listeners send us over IG here's my list you know jv yeah. always sends sends those to do us it, i enjoy, enjoy do it in the yeah. chats rather than do it yeah. in the in the private chats do it in the in the post chats because actually if you do it in the post chats it helps boost them with where the private chats don't boost shit anymore thanks instagram um right but do it public and then it encourages conversation with others so that's the key that's the whole point yeah. we want to make better stuff for the listeners Go public. that's the reason don't be yeah. afraid it's that's fine. right just put it out there yeah uh this was a good one. We went a little bit longer than usual, but it was a ton of fun. And uh, everybody that's watching on Twitch, thank you for tuning in live every week. We got a couple of regular guests. We appreciate that. Your comments during the show. Subscribe. Review. Thumbs up. Tell us why you like us. Tell us why you hate us. Uh, <laughs> you don't got to tell us why you hate us. That's okay. But same thing with, with with the podcast. Apple Podcasts. 
Spotify, Player FM, Podbean, whatever it is that you like, we're there. And omniversecomics.guide. That's the stop. That's the spot. One stop shop. If all of those other places are not your thing, don't worry. Omniversecomics.guide. That's where you're going to get it. We got you covered. Dave, you're the man. No, you the man. Thank you. I'll take it. Thank <laughs> you.